and welcome to a, a video tutorial in which we will build a villa. <laughs> yeah, and not only one villa. Uh, since we're 3D printing this villa, uh, and as I understand this, this is the first 3D printed kit available in the market uh, for houses like this. And um, the thing is that this 3D model set, you buy it, it's uh, eight dollars, I think. Yeah, eight dollars. Then you can make uh, four variations of the same house structure, meaning you can print and build 16 different houses on the along the same theme and populate your layout at the same cost as you, well, almost buy one <laughs> of these houses in the shops. So there's a huge cost benefit, but there's also a, an always instant uh, uh, availability option since it's always in online. You can just download it and print whenever you like, and there's no transports involved either. So I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really great. So let's get started. All right, we're kicking off by trying to print this pop. Uh, version of this house. Pop means print in one piece. And uh, well, as you see here, the entire house is assembled. All we need to do when printed is um, to paint it. However, I'm kind of skeptic to printing things this big on my printer because it will, well, maybe not look too good. It will probably print, but uh, there will be issues. And as you can see, I can actually fit two of these houses on one print plate, so I can print two at once. But I think I will go for just one to start with. And well, a few hours later, it looked like this in my printer. So well, the building is here and uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, so let's take it out and see what it actually looks like yeah so down into my cleaning bin with the alcohol this is uh, methanol in this bin and uh, what we need to do now is to clean it from excess resin because you want to get rid of all that resin before we start to paint this building and once cleaned we can have a closer look at what it actually looks like and uh, well it seems to have printed quite well it's not big issues here i'm removing the supports uh, with the working with a, a complex shaped uh, 3d print like this it's a good idea to cut away the supports and not just tear it off because then you will also destroy your model all right so now i've removed all of the supports now we can have a look at what the building looks like so inside it looks intact all the walls and everything's in place but you see here this is a typical defect when 3d printing large objects in the resin printer i also had some problems with some of the supports they were not holding on to the horizontal gutters. Now this was a very early version of this uh, uh, kit from uh, Model Railroad 3D. I've seen that uh, there's been two new updated versions since I printed this, so hopefully it's much better. I printed other things in one piece. This is a sand tower from another set, which is called Diesel and Sand. This one prints in one piece. So it comes out like this from the printer and you see the detail here. It's really good and I really like printing things in one piece. If you want to print uh, every detail individually, there is an image for it and the image also shows the location for that part. So here are all the parts. There are walls, stairs, windows and everything you need. There is also a file in each of these sets, which is called all parts, STL. So we're opening that and 
here are all the parts we need to build one of these houses. Now they are spread out on the print plate and that is to simplify the process of uh, removing them from the print plate once they're printed. There is also another version of this file which is called all parts small printer and then it's more compact and suitable for you guys with a smaller print plate. So now here's all the parts. I remove the print head from the printer and move the parts down into this bin with alcohol. The red alcohol here is uh, methanol and I'm gonna clean all of that um, resin which is uh, stuck on top on all surfaces before we take it to the table and dry it off. For that I'm using a piece of bathroom tissue. And I'm wearing protective gloves at all times because this resin is really nasty for your skin. So here are all the parts now. The roof parts, the long walls, the base plate, uh, the short walls, the front stair and the vertical gutters. All of the larger windows, the smaller windows and this is the door. So now I'm putting in it into the post curer and let it sit there for like one or two minutes. The first thing we're gonna do with the printed parts once they've been post cured is to prime them. And for this I'm using this Tamaya Surface Primer Gray. There are mainly two reasons to prime 3D printed parts. One is to uh, give a good surface for the paint to stick to and the other one is to prevent warping or skewing of the printed parts. But the paint itself, uh, here I'm using uh, acrylic paint from Vallejo. It's a brown red color which is typical for a Scandinavian building like this which I'm kind of guessing that this is. So I'm painting also the bottom part of the roof here which will be visible but I'm only painting the other part the interior part of the building will, or the roof will not be visible so I don't have to paint that if I don't like otherwise it's a good idea to paint both sides uh, of every object that way you also avoid skewing and warping with the red paint dry, we're now painting the tiled roof. And I've selected the classic orange for this. This is uh, back in the days, all of the tiled roofs up here in Scandinavia were mainly orange. And lastly, I paint the concrete bottom of these uh, walls using a concrete colored paint and the chimney of course so all four sides in general it's a good idea not to paint the surface which you will glue uh, later because the glue doesn't stick all that well to acrylic paint now we're painting the windows as well you can either spray the windows which uh, i would say is preferred tamaya has uh, both uh, white and gray colors for this and you just put them up on a stick with a double adhesive uh, tape like we did initially when we primed all the parts that simplifies this process otherwise we're painting all of the parts which should be white now so the edges of uh, the corners of the building as well as the edge of the roof and uh, lastly, we're painting the black parts, which are the steel railings and the horizontal and vertical gutters of this building. All right. So next thing we need to do is to put some windows into the window. So the window panes. I make these from uh, scrap plastic. Initially, I assembled the glass to the windows ahead of assembling the windows to the walls. This was, uh, well, you see it here. So this is one way you can do it. I will show you another method later. So with the glass in place, I assembled the window into the wall. 
Now, depending on your printer and the resin you use, there might be an, a warping which looks like this. So the parts end up a bit bent like this. This is most likely due to hydroscopic elongation, meaning that the material is actually absorbing some of that water or humidity in the air and expands. I use my iron, I put it on the temperature for nylon, which is a kind of low temperature, I would guess like 50 or 60 degrees. Then I just, uh, once the parts get soft, which they will, I kind of over bend it the other way slightly. And then once it seems to have settled, I bend it straight again and that's about it. After that, it typically do not warp more. So now we can just assemble all of the parts. The walls are assembled together, uh, but not to the base plate. The base plate is just inside uh, to keep the orientation and placement of the walls. This is because the base plate can be used to mount interior later. And as said earlier here, uh, the placement of each item in the set is shown in the image for that detail. So you can always go back to that. If you like, you can print it out and have it next to you while assembling. Now we're going to do some weathering of the roof because these orange uh, roofs are, well, they do not look all that nice, even though they have the correct color. Uh, they look kind of bright and shiny. So I add a wash of black acrylic paint and uh, airbrush thinner. The airbrush thinner typically contains from four parts of water and one part alcohol, which typically is isopropanol. And then I'm using the same wash also for that uh, lower section and also on the windows but here on the windows i'm wiping off all of the wash which has landed on top of the woodwork with a cotton swab like this so only the wash remains in the joints uh, same with the door here so no oh, a lot we have to remove some with a cotton swab so like this i'm cleaning all of the surfaces including the surface in the middle of the door here like this yeah that's that's great now it looks worn but not all that dirty so here's our house placed on the layout next to the railway line where else and you see it's well it looks kind of nice and it definitely does the trick now we're going to build a variation uh, with each of these set uh, the intention is to have uh, different variations available and this uh, Skumatorp house has uh, uh, five variations uh, in the set. This is Dormer, uh, which can be added to the original house. And if you look in your neighborhood, you will notice that uh, many of the houses are built on the same foundation. And then the, the each uh, buyer has added different options to their house, but basically they're all the same. And this is the basic thought uh, with these uh, sets as well, that they consist from one original design and a long row of variations. So you can actually build an entire neighborhood just by buying one 3d model set so here i'm going for um, another classic color combination um, uh, for scandinavia this is a yellow house with white corners and here's the door where it has the smaller windows for the upper floor I mentioned earlier that I came up with a better solution for the windows and this is it. So I make a mark in the window and then I just cut it to piece after I've assembled the window frame and then I just push this into the hole. Secure with a drop of facet glue if necessary. Okay, and then we can start assembly of all of the walls. 
So again, I'm gluing the walls to each other and not to the base plate. So the base plate will be removable. All right, so now we got all of these pieces in place. Now you see you can some in some cases get cracks like this. And uh, then I use a putty, a plastic putty from Vallejo called, it has item number 7401. So I just uh, squeeze some of that out into the crack and then I paint it over. So now let's glue this dormer in place on the roof piece. Yeah, nice. And then the chimney next to it. Now before uh, assembling the roof to the walls, I'm pushing out the bottom piece, the base plate. And you see here, uh, there is a, a hole uh, for cables. Uh, if you intend to have illumination in your house, you can feed the cables through that. So now with all this in place and the base plate removed, I assemble the roof to the walls. Only thing that remains now is the roof ridge. So here it comes. I do all the assembly using fast set glue. Let's now weather this roof a bit. I'm grinding off some pastel chalk powder from a pastel chalk, obviously, in gray, light gray color. And I'm applying this to the roof using a makeup applicator. Low-cost uh, applicators can be purchased on companies like Hennes & Mauritz, for instance, or Forever 21. Yeah, it kind of highlights the patterns of the, the roof a bit better. Apply it in streaks, starting from the roof ridge, going down. Like this. Yeah. So here are two houses. Uh, I got kind of curious on where this Skomartorp was. So I made a search over the entire world. It couldn't be all that many places. I would guess in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden or Denmark. And I found it here in Sudahammar in Sweden. So here's number 13. See it here? Unfortunately, there were no street view on this uh, street, so we cannot look at the house but there it is i don't know are you also getting curious when you're building the the kits where it actually originates from so now i know all right so here are the interior walls uh it has uh, the big part here is the ceiling this is the hole and the two small parts are for the small rooms and then the angle part is the other hole side so i make a mark here to see where the different rooms are and i make a note of what i'm anticipating and i mask the bathroom window with this tape it's a tape it's kind of textured tape for for medical use really I'm from 3m but it's a very useful tape so there is the bathroom window and that's very good because then we can feed the cables up without them being visible in any window and then they can be fed down into the roof using these holes now there are free printable interiors on my web page so you can download them from there. I think this is uh, really nice. It uh, helps a lot just to print uh, interior walls and floors and you just cut them out with a scissor and then glue them onto the base plate using this is PVA glue, which is um, equivalent to Elmer construction glue. So I just push this laminate floor in place also. Uh, Scandinavian classic wooden floor and here are the walls so let's see now I think I will have only this room illuminated meaning that this is the only room I actually need to have interior in 
So now I'm gluing this uh, wallpaper using PVA glue as well. All right, and then I cut it off the excess piece using a scissor. There are also doors on these uh, graphic sheets, so I glue that in place. Maybe a, a fine clock like this, and then some furniture below that. Another thing I like is to have a figure just inside a window looking out. Another great saving you can do is to buy surface mount LEDs, SMD LEDs from uh, Distrelec or Digikey in large batches of 100 or 500 pieces at once. The cost is just a few euro or dollar cent each. Now each generation of these LEDs is just three months, so I'm instead giving you a search phrase and you will find the items which are available at the time you are searching for it. Same goes for this carbon film resistor. It's a 10 kilo ohm, uh, uh, 0.8 watt. You find it at the same uh, stores, uh, meaning Digikey or uh, Distralec. And uh, well, a good thing before assembling LEDs into houses and structures is to check that they actually work because uh, there is a risk of damaging them when soldering and handling them. So now I know this one's working, so then I'm gluing it in place in the ceiling. And I'm not actually gluing on the LED itself, but to the cables that uh, is connected to it. So now I'm gluing the ceiling in place with the illumination, and then I push the base plate with the interior into the house. And this is what it looks like when we light the LED. So very, very nice. So I built uh, three of these houses. I painted them in different color schemes here to differentiate them a bit. The leftmost one has the dormer option and the patio. The center one is the original and the yellow has the dormer. So with this set you can print up to 16 different houses in the same style and the cost per each is just 225 in resin uh, once you have acquired the drawing set. So that's how it things looks. All right, so <laughs> three villas, or actually four, at the same uh, cost as the one from the manufacturers from your vendor. And the other advantage is always uh, available you don't have to wait for it's being out of stock from your dealer or waiting for the manufacturer to to make a new batch or anything you just download and and print whatever structures you need it's just fantastic and just one set and you can make all of these variations uh, it's it's just great and you may have noticed <laughs> but over the 12 months i've been using from time to time these uh, uh, 3d models from model railroad 3d and uh, i've also been doing some work for them helping them to take photos uh, of, of their stuff uh, when built and painted but now i've taken a more active part in this uh, in, or, in order to, to be able to give you uh, updates on what's going on, like for 2023, they aim to have 2,000 new 3D models online. So they already have, I think, 470. So that brings us up to 2,500 3D models on CG Trader by end of next year. Uh, whereas 20 of these will be uh, uh, buildings of different uh, kinds, like stations, uh, freight uh, sheds and uh, logistic companies, things like that. So, and also for different, uh, both for US um, style uh, structures and, and European. So uh, it, it's, it's a huge development ongoing. And I see from time to time that uh, the 3D printer manufacturers have sales. So if you're not yet into the 3D printing world, I my advice is to get there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic world of opportunities and, and it's not like yet, you know, printing your model railroad. It's, it's, uh, ah, it's, it's fantastic. You should try it. And hey, if you have not yet uh, subscribed to this channel, sub subscribe now and enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. And 
please. We're uh, dependent on the support from all of our viewers. So if you want to be one of the good guys, uh, get over to Patreon. Set up a support account there from, you know, like one, two dollars per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. Until we see each other next time, 